뉴스로 배우는 시사 한국어 들은 다 결혼하고 있고 아이를 낳고 있어서 Hi, hello, long time and no vlog that wasn't filmed in my apartment. Yes, so I just got off work and I was thinking we could do a study vlog because I have some italki class homework to do. But before doing that, I was thinking that we could go to the bookstore and look at the Korean books and then maybe do some stationery shopping. So let's go. Look how cute these are. Oh my gosh. I really, really love this character, but like the stationery with this little bro is always so expensive. Oh, okay. I lied. It's five dollars. <laughs> I thought it was expensive. This is pitch perfect. Really got me thinking you and I could be something. Pressed all the right buttons and now I'm done. Searching damn tired and yours and I'll be your heart and no competition. Sweet like gelato, dago, shape of Valentino. Rocking on a high, no gotta love it. Excuse my breathing. I just came up like three flights of stairs. <sighs> okay, but we have made it to the cafe. We have about an hour or so before they close because I ended up taking way too long in the bookstore and with the stationery. So I will show you what I bought when we get home. Um, but we're going to focus on doing that homework or else this is a wasted trip to the cafe. Okay, so you know how I was like, we have to go, 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 so much stuff to do, no time. Um, I went up to order my coffee and I ran into a subscriber and we talked for a good like 30 minutes at least, just up at the counter being like, <laughs> um, so if you're her, hi, it was nice meeting you. I had a lovely chat. Um, and if you're not her, oh my goodness, guys, we got to start this homework. I mean, regardless if you were watching this or not, but like, oh my God, I'm so tired. <laughs> it's fine. As I was studying, I realized I never gave y'all context about like what kind of homework I had or what kind of classes I was taking. I just said, my eye talking class and I have homework. <laughs> um, a pro, I'm a, I'm a study vlog pro, as you can tell. Um, so I've been trying out the group classes on italki, which if you don't know what italki is, it's basically an online platform that connects students and teachers uh, for language lessons. And um, usually the classes are one-on-one. -on -one. Italki recently added a new feature where teachers can have group lessons, so there are multiple students in a class so that the costs are cheaper. Um, and none of this is sponsored, unfortunately, um, but just to give you context. So I took three <laughs> group classes last week um, with three different teachers, and they were all a lot of fun. So we are back home now, obviously. Um, and I was thinking I could do like a little haul of what I got at the bookstore because today of all days, it was so quiet. Like you could hear a pen drop in there. It was like it was the library and it was a bookstore. So you might think that's normal, but for Kyobo, there's usually so many people that like having a normal conversation is fine that's not disruptive or anything but today it was so quiet anyway so the books so I got two as you can see here and because I told them I didn't need a bag they wrapped it for me like the two books together I've never not gotten a bag so I was 
surprised. So the first one is Tok Tok or Guejo Hangogo Maragi. Um, so this textbook is definitely below my level. I think it's meant for like upper beginner and low intermediate learners. I think first impression. I will have to see as I use it. Um, but it has like some real world situations in here related to like going to the bank finding an apartment, ding, ding, ding. And I was like, oh, I actually don't know some of these words. Also, if you guys remember my friend Julia, the one that's a kyosunim at one of the universities here in Korea, her Korean is also very, very good, like way better than mine, way better than mine. Um, her Korean teacher wrote this book um, a few years ago. And I was thinking of how um, I've been wanting to make more like textbook review videos because back when I was a language learning YouTuber for Korean, obviously, um, I always told myself I was going to do a ton of textbook reviews and then I just never got around to it. And then I moved to Korea and sold off all my Korean textbooks. Um, so I got this book mainly so that I could check it out and review it for the channel. <laughs> So money, kidejizeo. And then the second book I bought is more for me. Um, so this one is YT and Yusuro Peunin Shisa Hangugo, or like news Korean, learn news Korean with YT and news. So this is actually a compilation of actual news broadcasts that have been turned into um, study material. Typically, I would not buy this type of book because I can just watch the news. <laughs> but one of the group classes that I took a few days ago, actually. The teacher is using this book. Um, she sends like the PDF of whatever like section of the book we're going over in the group lesson. But I was like, oh, like I live in Korea. Let me just go buy the book. That way when I review it later, cause another thing I always wanted to do was review more intermediate and advanced level textbooks because there aren't that many people doing it. And then I just didn't do it. Um, so I want to review the book and I was like, it's better for me to buy it and be able to write in it so that when I review it, it seems more genuine rather than me having a ton of random like PDF stuff of it. Also, I intend to keep taking those group classes with that particular Sonseng name because I found it very beneficial. It was like on my level. While we were talking about books for learning Korean, if you've seen like any Korean textbooks going around on social media or just like books that you've been considering buying that you think I should do a review on, please let me know in the comments section. Um, because like I said earlier, I basically had to sell off all my textbooks before moving here a few years ago. Um, so in order for me to do reviews, especially for like the upper beginner, low intermediate, or just intermediate level in general, I'm gonna have to actually go back and buy those books <laughs> um, or find someone that has it, which I'll link the playlist that I have for like the beginner textbook reviews and the intermediate textbook reviews, but like there's not that many. Moving on to the stationery, I ended up buying two new highlighters. They are both purple, but I promise they are two different shades. So if you did watch my like language learning content, you might remember that I used the highlighter color purple for highlighting words that I don't know. And I couldn't remember which shade of purple it was. So I bought both because when I was looking for my purple highlighter, I couldn't find it. I must have lost it sometime within the past year and I didn't even notice because I haven't been like studying that much. Um, so I bought some. These were like 1800 won? Yeah, 1800 won. So they were pretty cheap. Look at how cute this little bear is. I love this character so much. Like he's literally on my pencil case. Look at this. I got this pencil case like two years ago, two and a half years ago. Honestly, I think I got this right after I moved here. So it's been a while. So I was thinking like, okay, these so cute together, so cute. And then this is the case that I put my laptop in when I go out and I either use a tote bag or I don't take a bag at all and just carry my laptop. I use this. So like these together, these are two different bears, two different characters, but I mean like, they're cute, they, they match, okay, they match. And then the last thing I got was this cute little figurine. I've seen this on social media for a while and I've been wanting one for so long, but I always told myself they're basically just clutter because I my apartment is so small that there's no place for little cute knickknacks, but I saw him and I was, I couldn't, I couldn't stop myself. I was like, let's just get it. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at him. He's sitting and he has a light bulb on his head. Oh my God. Out of all the versions they had, this was not the one I wanted. I wanted the little man on his laptop because it makes me think of me when I sit down to edit. But like, I'll accept it. He's cute. Hello, it is the next day. Um, So my italki class starts very soon, like in three minutes. And I think today it's supposed to be a group class, but I think I'm the only one that registered. 
And for whatever reason, the teacher decided not to cancel the class because I don't know if most teachers do, but Italki tells you like, oh, if two people don't sign up, the teacher might cancel the class. She didn't cancel it. I guess I'm getting a one-on-one -on -one class <laughs> for the price of a group class. <laughs> あ、あまくれよ。ちょっと無理ですよ。本当に。で、美国で사는 <laughs> 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 Okay, so this is like my eighth time doing this because I keep going off topic because I'm so exhausted. But class was lovely. Class was nice. It did end up being a one-on-one -on -one class, um, which I was a little anxious about because I've only ever taken one class with this one saying and it was a group class. So I was a little, I was nervous. I don't know why, because the majority of my classes, the, like I've taken over 100 classes on italki that would have all been one on one, right? Because this group class thing is new. Um, and yet for some reason I was nervous. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, we were talking about like the low birth rate in Korea and how potentially bringing in foreign workers from uh, abroad to be foreign workers from abroad. Just how it really? How we could bring in workers from abroad to be in-house nannies and in-house housekeepers so that dual income families don't feel as burdened, I guess, like when it comes to domestic labor. We did a lot of discussion and that was really great because every sentence, which I think some people are gonna take this the wrong way or would not enjoy it if this had happened to them in a class, but she corrected all of my sentences. Like she wrote them out for me. Basically, every time I said something, she rephrased it in the chat to a way that a native speaker would say it because I feel like my speaking skills honestly aren't that great. Like, I feel like when I speak Korean, I just sound like a level four person, like topic level four. When in reality, like if you were to measure my level as a whole, it'd be advanced. Cause like my listening and reading skills are really good. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but like they're pretty good. But when I speak, I sound like I'm a whole notch or two notches lower on the fluency um, scale, which is fine. I just need to work on it more. So if you are wanting to try out italki, which I highly recommend you'll do, I actually do have like an affiliate link with a discount code for them. It's in the description box. Again, this isn't sponsored, but like if you have the financial ability to take italki classes, whether you're gonna do the group classes or one-on-one -on -one classes, I really think you should like, when I think, like sincerely, when I think of my Korean progress, like the time that I was improving the most, like the quick, the most and the quickest is when I started taking italki classes regularly. Like that helps me a lot. It helps with like motivation and accountability because there was someone expecting me to do my homework, expecting me to show up to class, expecting me to, you know, review the words in the chapter and stuff rather than like just myself, you know? Cause when it's just you, you can be like, oh, I can just do it tomorrow. I can just do it next week. But when there's a teacher, you can't do that. You can't make excuses. You actually have to do it. Hello, welcome to the Korean language Q&A portion of this video. Yeah, but before we get started answering your questions about learning Korean, um, I wanted to share some updates on the group trip that I talked about in the second to last video, I think. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, we are doing a group trip this year. Based on your survey responses, we will be going to Japan in September. September, we are gonna be doing Osaka, Kyoto, and Nara, like where the little bowing deer are. Oh my God, I'm really excited. So you can't register for the group trip yet. Like I'm still preparing that, but I'm assuming registration will go live probably a week after this video goes live, a week and a half. But I will leave a link in the description box and in a pinned comment so that you can enter your email so that you can be notified when the like group trip goes live because um, there's a limited number of spots and the first eight people that register for the trip will get a discount. The sticker price sounds a little crazy when I say that, but please keep in mind like, like you basically get to Japan and everything is taken care of. Your transportation within Japan would be taken care of, your accommodations in four-star hotels the whole time. 
um, the tour guides, basically everything is taken care of by the travel agency. So that's why the price is what it is. But yeah, okay. And I also knew people were gonna ask like, why aren't we going to Korea? So based on the survey results, the majority of you guys said you wanted to do this type of group trip in September or October. And given the fact that I work full time, there were only two weeks across that two month span that worked with my PTO for us to do this type of trip. And both of those weeks, the Korea-based tour guides were not available, like at all, which makes sense because both of those weeks overlapped with national Korean holidays, but I was like, <sighs> honestly, I felt really bad. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I was really hoping that we could potentially do one to Korea and one to Japan, but if the tour guides, if they're not available, then yeah, it, I'm actually, I'm really disappointed about it. I was really excited about potentially doing both, but it's not feasible this time around. So yeah, but um, if you're interested in going to Japan, um, do put your information in like that little form. It's gonna ask for your name and your email. That's it. And it'll update you when registration is open. And if registration is already open, I'll put a link to registration. So yeah, let's jump into your questions about learning Korean so Natalia can go to sleep. I'm so tired. Are there any places where we can learn for free? Yes. Okay, so I made a whole like 20, 30 minute video about free resources for learning Korean as a beginner about three, yeah, three years ago. It has so many resources in it. So I will encourage you to check that out. Obviously, because some time has passed, some of those resources might now be behind a paywall, like talk to me in Korean. What phrases and words are best to start with? <sighs> okay, so when you first meet a Korean person, they almost always ask you the same five to 10 questions. It's what's your name? Where are you from? When did you come to Korea? How long will we be in Korea? How did you start learning Korean? Why are you learning Korean? Why are you in Korea? What do you like about Korea? Can you eat Korean food? Do you like Korean food? They almost always ask these questions. Um, and then sometimes they will say like, do you have a girlfriend? Do you have a boyfriend? Da -da -da -da. Learn how to answer these questions, learn how people tend to ask these questions. And I feel like you'll have a pretty good base. So that's what I would start with other than like the obvious level one basics. How do you avoid becoming overwhelmed by too many resources for learning Korean? This is a very good question. And I feel like it's very relevant to me because if you were watching my content before I came to Korea, I had so many Korean textbooks. Like I was a hoarder of Korean textbooks. I feel like you really have to sit down and ask yourself, what are my current goals? And I don't mean like, oh, my goal is to become fluent in Korean or my goal is to be able to watch K-dramas. No, honey, that's a lovely goal, but it's too big. It's too vague. I want your short term goal. If your goal is to achieve a certain score on the topic, then you need to be using resources that are gonna help you get that score on the topic. And I say that because believe it or not, the topic is not about showing how fluent you are in Korean. It's about showing how much you prepared to take the exam. It's like the SAT, but for the Korean language. And it sucks, it sucks. But because of that, if your goal is to get like three or four or one of these intermediate or advanced scores, you should not be using resources to help your speaking. You should not be using resources that are like, let me teach you slang. Do Koreans really care if you only learn honorifics? Yes and no. It kind of depends on what situations you're gonna end up in. So for example, if you are like in the workforce like me, if you are going to work every day, honestly, your coworkers aren't even gonna know that you don't know Panmar because you are expected to always use Jeonnaemmae. It's expected that all your chat messages are in Jeonnaemmae, all your emails are in Jeonnaemmae. When you are in a meeting, you're using Jeonnaemmae. Like if you use Panmae, it's unacceptable. Like if you were like joking with a coworker that you're like really close to, you can like, you know, sneak some Panmae in there and it's considered acceptable, but like the default should always be chun them by. So your your coworkers won't know. So they wouldn't care. Like let's say you make a really good friend here in Korea, you're traveling together, you're around the same age. Um, and if they're using Pamar to you, but you continuously use only chun them by because you don't know Pamar, and let's say they don't know you don't know Pamar for whatever reason, um, they're not gonna like it. It's gonna feel like you are deliberately putting space between you and them. It's gonna feel like you, you're you willing, you wanna be friends with them, but you don't wanna be 
good friends with them. Now, obviously there are gonna be times where you can be really close friends with someone and you will never speak to them in Panmar. You kind of just have to assess every situation and every relationship you have to determine what is the right way to speak to that person. Okay, my throat is actually starting to hurt because I've been talking for too long. But I hope you found this section of the video helpful. If you're wanting to try out italki, I have a discount code in the description box. If you want to tell me what resources I should review, tell me in the comment section. If you're interested in the group trip, there's a link in the comment section. I know, there was a lot of information right there, but there were so many things we talked about in this video. And I didn't want you to forget any of them because I talked for too long, so. <sighs> yeah, okay, anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!